Hello there mates, Mushi Gamer here, and this is Shadowrun Hong Kong Ascendant Edition Episode 21. So I just got some karma, and let me uh, level up real quick. I'm thinking I might give it to stream. Five karma for five strength, sounds good to me. That leaves me with four karma. Quickness. Let's dodge. Dodge spread reduces the chance to be hit by physical attacks. Characters with high dodge are less likely to be attacked than their teammates. Ooh. That says I want to know what it does. Auto reload building ammo costs zero AP. That's actually really nice. Um. Sure, I'll give the rest a dodge. Since I am gonna be tanking it eventually. Do I spend the other guy's karma? I don't think I do. Or I'm not the only one here. Joy. Alright, let's go see uh, how my choices affected my character. Uh, it just goes back to where I am. What are you here for? I don't remember you guys standing here before. Two men in dirty synth leather jackets look up from the conversation at your approach. They both look haggard. Their soldiers slump with exhaustion. And neither appears to have shaved this morning. What do you want, women? We're talking here. I'm new in town. Figured it'd pay to make all the connections I can. A grim chuckle rumbles out of him. You chose the wrong date, stranger. We're moving further downstream and we're doing it today. There's something wrong with this place. Too many bad dreams. I know what you mean. The man blinks. His expression shifts from guarded to curious. Did you dream it too? The long corridor and the thing with the ivory crown? Yeah. He licks his lips, nodding. Lots of people in town dreamed it or something like it. From the folks I talked to, there were a bunch of different versions. Some people turned away from the corridor, went down alleys, that kind of thing. I never met any- I've never even set foot in the wall CD before. Stranger, so tell me, why the hell am I dreaming about it all of a sudden? I don't even know what the damn thing looks like on the inside. I guess me, like I told you, I'm new here. I think that there's something strange going on, something magical, and the wall city is where it's coming from. He grunts, it's a curse, nothing else it could be. Everybody knows that place is haunted, a living hell full of evil spirits and poison key. If you're not careful, you'll wind up trapped inside with the rest of the human garbage. His companion cuts in, you catch a he healthy whip of alcohol on his breath. It isn't gonna happen to us, no way, only the lowest of the low wind up in the walled city. But like you said, we're going further downstream. As soon as our things are packed, we're out of here. Damn right, this place is a dump anyway. Let's try our luck in Macau to hell with this place. That's the luck then. We could say the same to you. You're staying in Healy after all. Of the three of us, you're the one who's most likely to need it. I can agree. Let me see uh, how screwed I am. Your X station, Mitch Computer? A blinking message. Check your inbox for new messages. Raven Black's history. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own into Raven's history. I guess he doesn't trust Connie Chain to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him since she hide things from us if it was in her best interest to do so. So I've been poking around various corners of the Matrix trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners leave a data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in their way. Working backward in time, Raymond starts out that way, but it slowly tapers away into nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records in Seattle. Power, utilities, a couple of public discussion sites he signed up for, but the further back I get, the less I find. And the craziest part is this. Prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all. And that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before then. I don't know. I'm going to keep digging, but it'll take me a while. I'll let you know when I get some news worth sharing. Send a party. From Kylie Chang. The MS, MS needs you to come to the parlor. A friend and business partner of mine named Dr. Shen Yang has needed your services. Something about attending a, Falco, a fancy party in Repulse Bay. He was unwilling to give me the details. I think he wanted to side you up himself. 
Oh, so she's not like upset with me or I mean payment for my homework. You submit the job, it's finished, and I'm gonna wait the response. A few moments later, a message pops onto the screen. I asked you to solve a problem, and your methods for solving it is to kill the people I was doing a favor for? I have half a mind to throw you into the goddamn bay! Still, the one poems is now more afraid of me than ever, and money started flowing again, so I suppose that's something. I've attached your payment. The one poems made it explicitly clear that they wouldn't have paid at all except to ensure you never come back to the gardens. Next time, try not to fuck the job up so much. I may not be as forgiving. <laughs> That's fair. I did a horrible job. I killed my clients. <sighs> okay. Uh, I guess we can go meet Kylie Chang's friend and uh, start the missions back up later. Handsome Lee. Strange name you got there. It's muggy out even for Huey in monsoon season. You pause to mop your brow. Suddenly you feel eyes upon you. As you glance up, you meet the tranquil searching gaze of a man half hidden in the shadows. He's wearing a crisp white tailored shirt. Shirt sleeves neatly rolled with a dark gray silk tie and smart black trousers. If he's sweating, you don't see it. The man tilts his head ever so slightly in greeting. A newcomer! Welcome! He flashes you a brilliant smile, eyes glinting with amusement. You can just barely detect the faint trace of an accent in his voice. Handsome leaves the name. Purveyor of enhanced sensory experiences. I can see you've got some tales to tell. You mentioned you sold enhanced sensory experiences. Let's see what you got. You're not from around here, are you? He's, his mouth flickers briefly. He's, sort of, he's got a decent poker face, but you can tell that he's ratted. And, ah, why do you ask? You still got an accent, Lee. He's barely there, but I can hear it. Ah, he fidgets uncomfortably. You're right. I'm not from Huey. Where are you from, then? I was born in Taiwan. I was forced to flee during the Nationalist War. I hear you have a slight accent as well. Seattle? Emphasis on the slight. The corner of his lips curls smugly. It's your move. Apparently. Put on your best fake accent. Nyet Rusky. Handsome Lee gives an elegant chuckle. Ah, and you got a sense of humor, too. We can certainly use some levity in this place. Yeah, it's kind of a shithole, isn't it? Yes, but it's what I call home. And what's your story? Just passing through on business. Ah, very good. He smiles ingratiently. As it so happens, I'm a businessman. Perhaps you'd like to talk a little business with me. So how about it, friend? He opens his jacket, revealing a mirror of small, bulging pockets sewn into the interior lining. Can I show you my wares? Show me what you've got, Lee. Uh-huh. Well, I'm not interested in getting high, but thanks. Be well. Alright. Let me talk to Connie Chang and see what she has to say to me. Connie Chang appears to be nearing the end of a heart that shames to strangle about who's listening intently. So you tell that little putzel that Auntie Chang isn't fucking happy. You get it? Not happy at all. Don't tell him that I'm displeased. Don't tell him that I didn't take it well. She slams a shot glass on the table. Tell him that I'm extremity chopping mad. And if he doesn't want what happened to ye to happen to him, he better get his head and his ass white together and get me that payment. Today. He raises an eyebrow. Was that message clear enough, Mr. Bao? Yes, Miss Chang. I'll explain things to him in terms he can understand. Bao steps back and becomes a meat statue once again. Kindly Chang's voice uh, turns trickle sweet when she sees you waiting on for her. Ah, our newly minted shadow runner. How are you taking to your new role, MS? So far, so good. I had no doubt, my sweet. I have a nose for talent. And how is Mr. Gunshow doing with his new life? He's doing just fine, Auntie. Don't worry, I have my eye on him. He should be okay. Just need some time to get used to all of this. Very good, my dear. Very good. Was there something specific you came to see me about? Uh, any word on, on the plastic face man? Just checking in, Auntie. It faces stay in touch. Learn anything about Raymond? Kylie Chang picks up a mahjong tile and tosses it into the pallet center of the table. Not yet. He's elusive. Clearly a man who knows how to stay out of the public eye. But I have my network running working day and night to find him. And I still have some favors that I can call in if, I need, if need be. I'll find him. It's only a matter of time. I have good news as well. One of my people managed to tap the communications of the 8KP of Special Duties Unit. If any word about Plastic Phrase Friend or if Raymond Black crosses their door, I'll be the first to know it. 
For now, go about your business. I'm sure that more work would come your way any moment. I will contact you when there is news. Alright, Xin Yang, let's talk. A rotund, balding dwarf in a cheap suit turns to face you. Light glints from the heavy gold chains that hangs around his neck. When he speaks, the voice that greets your ears is high and nasal and has been contorted into a rough approximation of a New York accent. Pleased to meet you. Chang was kind enough to arrange his little sit down between us. He extends a slap like hand for you to shake. You can call me Dr. Shin Yang. It's always good to meet a plane, huh? Pleased to meet you. I'm MS. His grip is soft as his palm is moist. It's like shaking hands with a boneless ham. You share a long, uncomfortably flaccid handshake before he finally releases you. I'm uh, looking for a little outside help on a problem I've been having. Ordinarily, I handle it myself or have some of my friends see to it, but it's kind of delicate, you know? My guys beat notice before they made any headway on my problem, so I figure, hey, I hire contractors all the time. Might as well get some tongue tractors of a different stripe. Tell me about your problem. Maybe we can help. I run a, I run a little film studio, Southern Crown Films. We mostly do trade work, but we, rec we, we record some sims, too. Maybe you've seen some of my stuff. Space Mongols from the Moon, The Flavor of Pomegranates, Ultimate Kill Squad. Sounds familiar? Oh, a fan. Good. It's always nice to meet a fellow film enthusiast. Anyway, there's this other guy in the industry, and we've been butting heads since day one. Name's Neville Ma, and he runs Yellow Spring Studios. No matter what I do, I can't shut Ma out of the business. He always manages to get one over me. Still my stars, it's a tough racket, and if you want to stay on top, you gotta use every advantage you can get. Recently, Ma's been running me into the ground with this show called Promises in Moonlight. It stars a girl named Penelope Wong. New talent, but the viewers have been going nuts over her. She's the linchpin, the one who holds the whole show together. And so, you want something to happen to Miss Wong? Hang on, I'm getting there. So about six months ago, Neville was out in Gunzao for some hoity-toity party. He's on the road, probably drunk. A semi comes out of nowhere and pow, wrecks his fancy new Eurocar Westwind. Bad luck for Neville, good luck for me. I figure, hey, that's the end of him for the year and I start planning some new stuff he can compete with from inside a hospital. You follow me so far? Yes, please keep going. Problem is, the bastard's back in the game already. He's bringing out season 2 of Promises in Moonlight. I need that show off the air, one way or another. And that, my friend, is when you come in. How long did it take him to recuperate already? That's strange. Tough break. Maybe the wreck wasn't that bad. Yeah, right. His car was totaled. No way he walked out of that wreck on Scaft. I tell you, kid, he should have been in the hospital for at least 3 months and in physical therapy a lot longer. Only took him like a week to get out. Couldn't freaking believe it. That kind of medical care costs top dollar. He's got a lot of money, but not that much. Recovery time like that means that one of two things is going on. Neville could have found himself a silent partner, so I'm willing to pay top dollar for cutting edge care. I don't think it's likely, but it could have happened. If it ain't that, the smart money says that he's been skimming off the top of the Yellow Springs earnings and not reporting it to the other shareholders. And you want me to look into that, I take it. I need you to go get me something to blackmail Neville with. Find out how he could afford to get out of the hospital so fast. He works out of his penthouse most days, so search his computer, closet, soft drawer, whatever. There's gotta be something incriminating in there. Where's this penthouse? Neville lives in the Repulse Bay. It's this real swanky joint on the south end of Hong Kong Island, by the bay with the same name. I haven't been able to get anybody in to poke around his apartment because the security's too tight. Lucky for you, though, Neville's throwing a party on the mezzanine level with all the shops and a restaurant and balcony and such. He's celebrating the second season launch of his show, and everybody's gonna be there. Gonna make a real snarl for the building security. You might also want to hit up the party if you can bluff your way in. Everyone close to Neville will be there, and most of them will be three sheets to the wind by the time you get there. Some discreet questioning might get the dirt that I need. Just remember, if you go to the party, don't use your real name. Go with Argyle. She'll be safe enough. There's nobody in the biz out there with that name. So nobody asks you any questions about how your work's going. Hit the apartment, hit the party, dig up blackmail information on Neville Mall. Sounds easy enough. He nods vigorously. Oh, yeah. Chang talked you up when I approached her with a job. Given what she told me, this job should be cake. Now, the black member to you is what I need more than anything. Do you get Penelope Wong out of her contract? I'll pay you extra. Got it? I want the star power on my side. 
One last thing, I don't want you starting a scene while you're there. You interrupt this party, make a mess, or trash this apartment, and I'm not paying you. We clear on that? We're clear. Good. I can't have Ma knowing that I'm after him. In my business, everybody's got dirty tricks, but if you make it public, you're using them. Dr. Shen draws a finger across his throat. That's it. My career is as dead as the People's Republic of China. Nobody will work with me, work with, for or with me ever again, so don't embarrass me, hey? Understood. I'll be discreet. That's what I like to hear. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You can get paid and I'll put the word out that you're a solid hire. Sounds like we have a deal then. His grin wise. Good woman. That's what I like to hear. When you're done, drop Chang a line. I'll come meet you back here and I'll hand over the money. Alright, so before I end the video, I do want to go in do some shopping. So I'm guessing I'm not allowed in Wampoa Gardens anymore. Which is fine by me. What is this? Club 88. Hmm, not interested. That's where the Wall City is. Where is I could I see the tech store. Alright. Open door. Hmm. Maybe the tech plates in the uh I can't actually go in there, can I? It doesn't let me. Oh well. over this direction. Use intercom 4k. Oh. No, nothing back here. I thought she said there was a shopping district somewhere around here. Oh, well, I seem to run into weapons uh, places every time I go do a mission. So I'll just uh, depend on that. But anyway, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, comment or subscribe below. And Mushi Gamer signing out.